My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome to welcome you, excuse me, to our evening services for Sunday, December the 11th. Per usual, we will sing several songs, observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will be useful. Uh, we are singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, if you do not have that book, why, I will give you the title so that you can find it in your book or Google it so that you can sing along with us. The first song we will sing is number 578. The title is We Will Glorify. 578. We will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Wonderful. If you would turn to number 722, let the beauty. It's let the beauty. Actually, it's let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. <clears throat> let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All is wonderful passion and purity. May his all my being refine. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. When somebody has been so unkind to you, some word spoken that pierces you through and through, think how he was beguiled, spat upon and reviled, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. From the dawn of the morning till close of day, in example, in deeds, and in all you say, lay your gifts at his feet, Ever strive to keep sweet. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you. And before the Lord's Supper, number 705. A common love. A common love. 705. A common love. <clears throat> a common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope 
for tomorrow a common joy in the truth of God's word. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word. We are instructed uh, in our Bibles uh, to uh, gather together the first day of the week to break bread. That is said quite specifically in the 20th chapter of Acts and verse 7. Jesus instituted this uh, the night in which he was betrayed when he sat with his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body drink. This is my blood. Uh, the Apostle Paul in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, uh, almost word for word, uh, uh, recounted this for us, for the Corinthian church and for you and I. And so with that in mind, we gather about his table. We gather to remember uh, the death of our dear Savior. We uh, gather and we observe so that we will remember that he was the one and perfect sacrifice for each one of us. And so as we partake of the bread, let's remember the body of our Lord. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that in your divine plan that Jesus left your right hand and came down to earth and lived as a human, that he taught such wonderful things and in the end, he died as the perfect sacrifice for us, that he became our intercessor and our mediator, that we may approach you. I pray, dear Heavenly Father, that as we partake of this bread, we remember his body that uh, hung in agony upon the cross. Bless us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. And in the same manner, he took the cup. Let's pray for the cup. As we partake of this fruit of the vine, let's remember the blood that Jesus shed for us, the blood that washes away our sins, the life-giving blood, and understand that it does give life to us. We just pray that we'll remember this as we observe and we'll remember that it is the covenant between us and you, dear God. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We've completed the Lord's Supper, but for convenience sake at this time, we think about giving back to the Lord. Uh, we do this because in the eighth chapter of uh, the book of uh, Second Corinthians, uh, the Apostle Paul talked about giving and cheerful giving. Uh, the giving of the Macedonians were given the example of the widow and her might. Were give, mites, the two mites that she gave were, were just uh, brought into remembrance that all that we have comes from you. Help us as we give to remember that uh, these gifts go to uh, the church that Jesus died for, that uh, the church would be a vehicle for both evangelism and for benevolence here on earth. I just pray that uh, we'll remember this as we give. Let's pray together. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we give. Help us to give with an open heart. Help us to give with gratitude. Help us to give cheerfully. Bless us and bless those that care for these monies, that they may be used wisely, that we may be just stewards of what is given, that the Lord's name would advance both in this area and other areas. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen.
we're going to sing a children's song. Uh, the children's song is called His Banner Over Me is Love. Okay? His Banner Over Me is Love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his, his banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his, his banner over me is love. The Lord is mine and I am his, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Oh, I love him and he loves me, his banner over me is love. I love him and he loves me, his banner over me is love. Him and he loves me, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. Jesus is the rock of my salvation, his banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. That concludes our song service. Uh, I have a message for you that I hope will be useful, beneficial, and uh, enlightening. And that uh, you have something that uh, you can take with you this evening. Uh, Jane and I recently got back uh, from a trip uh, to Peru. Yes, we did see Machu Picchu. We did climb all the way up. Uh, we even in the uh, city of Cusco, at least I did, the same morning that we climbed uh, Machu Picchu, uh, climbed this uh, rocky uh, mountain uh, all the way to the top and across uh, at 11,000 feet. Uh, it was not the easiest thing that I've ever done. You know, uh, when we look at mountains like this, we see rock. Many of the mountains, uh, there's so much rock involved. And we look at the rock and, and we see permanency. We see uh, hardness. And we know that uh, the rock is secure. We know that the uh, there's a great benefit of those rocks. And we literally climbed those rocks as we went to see this magnificent uh, ruin of Machu Picchu. Um, we even have a, <laughs> a chain of mountains in the United States called the Rocky Mountains. One can immediately, I believe, see the comparison between rocks and God. God is solid. He is beautiful. He is everywhere. And there are many, many phrases in our Bibles that use the word rock to convey very important spiritual messages to us. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verses 2 and 3, uh, David's song of praise for victory, uh, the victory that God gave him, went like this. He said, the Lord is the rock. I'm sorry, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. A stronghold. Rock is equated to that. It's equated to strength. But this carries over into the New Testament also. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 11, the Apostle Paul teaches Christians to be faithful and not sin as the children of Israel sinned. If you remember, 
uh, in Exodus 17 and in Numbers chapter 20, that uh, Moses uh, delivered the water from them, from the rock. And the apostle Paul says in uh, verse 4 of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking, get this, from a spiritual rock <clears throat> which followed them. And the rock was Christ. Christ still gives us the water of life, according to John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. When Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter answered and he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God in the 16th chapter of the book of Matthew, verses 15 to 16. And Jesus was so impressed with this that he said, upon this rock, and that was the confession that Peter made, I will build my church. Jesus actually made a little play on words with the term rock. Uh, Peter, the, the name actually means rock, but it's a small rock. The word rock petros that Jesus used is, uh, is petros, which is a strong, powerful rock. And so Jesus was going to build his church on the fact that as the anointed one of God, he was the massive rock upon which the church would be built. And as we look further in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, it says, this was foretold by Isaiah. This is Paul quoting Isaiah. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a tested stone, a costly cornerstone for the foundation, firmly placed. He who believes in it will not be disturbed. Hmm. The synonym for stone is rock. And don't we know the story that we designate as a children's story, but it's not from Matthew, the seventh chapter in verse 24, where Jesus said, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house upon the rock. And that was the promise. The rains fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house. And yet it did not fall. Why? Verse 725 says, because it was founded on the rock. Isn't this a wonderful promise? We have the promise that the rock of Jesus can protect us from the storms of life. We know that there are storms in our life from time to time. We know that things happen from time to time that are not pleasant, but we know that we have the rock of our salvation, Jesus Christ, to help protect us. Now, there is a problem with that. And Moses found the problem. And when it came time for Moses to die, God told him what his people would do in the future. They were going to worship other gods, they were going to forsake the everlasting rock who is God. And so Moses was told to write a song and to teach it to the people and to sing that song that it would be a reminder to them. The song is called the Song of Moses. We covered this in our uh, Tuesday night uh, Bible class when we were studying about Nehemiah. And in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it says, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness without injustice, righteous and upright is he. Later in the song, Moses foretold what would happen. He said, But Jeshurun, that was the nation of Israel, would grow fat, And it says, you, are, you have grown fat and thick and sleek, 
Then he forsook God who made him and scorned the rock of this salvation. The problem was that when Israel grew rich, they forsook God. And isn't that true today? Sometimes we allow other things to get in the way of the rock of our salvation. Uh, when things are going so very well, uh, we think sometimes that we don't need the rock anymore. Things are going so well, and that perhaps we even think they're going so well because I'm doing it all by myself. But in the song, Moses goes on to explain. He says in verse 18, You neglected the rock who begat you and forgot the Lord who gave you birth. Sometimes we get so busy with life uh, that we may not intend to leave out God, but we just neglect him. Isn't that interesting? That's what happens <clears throat> to cars and to homes. Uh, if, if we don't upkeep our homes, if we don't upkeep our cars, they, they won't last. It isn't from anything we've done, but rather it's from what we haven't done. It's the neglect. We don't make ourselves take the time to honor the rock. And then Moses gave a third problem. And the third problem was this. The Israelites, and by the way, we can bring this down to 2022 as well as us, make other things our rock. Probably no one that I'm talking to uh, this evening is really, really wealthy. But sometimes just that money that we accrue becomes so important to us that it takes the forefront instead of the background. Sometimes our businesses we get so involved in our work that we forget the rock. Sometimes we get so involved in the physical pleasures of life that we forget the rock. And remember, Moses explained in verse 31, indeed, their rock is not like our rock. But when they make other things the rock, God's judgment and condemnation came down upon them. Moses didn't get to see the promised land. That whole generation of people that left Egypt did not get to see the promised land because they made other things their rock. They deviated from the wonderful grace that God was offering to them. And Moses helped them to see this by asking in verse 30, how could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless their rock had sold them and the Lord had given them up? And so what we find is that when Individuals, in the case of the Israelites, even nations neglect the rock or find another rock to guide them. The true rock gives up on them. In the case of Israel, when they forgot their rock, God allowed other nations to take them over. They wound up in captivity the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians. It all happened when the people were disobedient. And I would compare this, uh, compare this disobedience to them giving up the rock. Now, in our New Testaments, we find the same thing displayed, the same message in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 8 the same message when jesus is spoken of as a stone of stumbling 
a rock of offense. Sometimes people stumble over Jesus Christ when they don't want to obey. When they don't want to obey his commands, they go about stumbling. They go about groping in the darkness. And they're offended sometimes what Jesus desires of them. The sacrifice, the service, the love, and the obedience. And so <clears throat> this evening, as we think about God, who is our everlasting rock, and as we think about Christ, the rock upon which we build, the rock upon which the church was built. We think of the rock foundation. We ought to have that same plea that the psalmist expressed in Psalm chapter 71, verse 3. Be to me a rock of habitation to which I may continually come you have given commandments to save me, for you are my rock and you are my fortress. This will never change. It will be true from the first moment that we breathe life into our bodies until the last breath that we take. God is the rock in which we are to live not just a rock that we're supposed to seek when we're in trouble, not a rock that we're supposed to forget about when other things kind of cloud our thinking and take preeminence over doing the will of God. We need to continually come to the rock. Psalm 61 verse 2 says, From the end of the earth I call to you, when my heart is faint, and it says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. You see, we must always come to the conclusion that God, our rock, is higher than we are. You know, sometimes our burdens are such that we grow faint from them but we shouldn't, we shouldn't grow faint. We shouldn't grow faint because God is our rock and the Lord will lead us to that which is higher than the rock of the trouble that we face. Jesus is the rock of our, our salvation. The children's song said it so beautifully Jesus is the rock of my salvation. His banner over me is love. His banner over me is love because he is the rock of my salvation. This has to take a preeminent part of all of our lives to remember God the rock, Jesus the rock, the cornerstone upon which the church was built. That makes him the cornerstone of our life. We are to build our spiritual homes upon that rock. So as we saw from Matthew 7, when the winds blow and the tides rise, that no matter how they beat against our house, because it's built upon the rock, it will be able to withstand we need to just continually to remember that God is our rock. God becomes our rock when we uh, take him into our lives. When we say, you are the rock of my life, I want you to continue to be that rock. And if we haven't become a child of God, God cannot be that rock. <clears throat> if we have not confessed that Jesus is indeed the Son of God, if we haven't repented of our former ways and been baptized from, for the remission of our sins, 
God cannot be our rock. If you need to make that decision tonight, we are here to help you. If you need to come to the Lord, if you need to confess and repent and be baptized, give us a call. We will be there. We will help you uh, to make that step into obedience. Why? So that God can become our rock. So that Jesus can become the rock of our salvation and his banner over us can be love. Isn't that a wonderful thought? As we conclude the service, let's all pray together. We thank you so much for the imagery of the rock, dear God, that it's just uh, all through the scripture that Jesus is the rock of our salvation. He is our cornerstone, that David understood that the rock is our refuge, that Peter got it when Jesus said, I, upon this rock, I will build my church. Help us and help us, dear Lord, not to reject the rock. Help us when times get hard to remember the rock and help us moreover when times get easy when good things are happening to us, that we think they're happening to us by, you know, some magical, mystical power, but they're happening to us because God is our rock and he's providing the way. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we uh, try to do your will in our lives. I just pray that you would uh, be with those that uh, in our church bulletin that are on our prayer list. I ask a special prayer for Gary Smalls as he's been admitted back into the hospital. And I pray that you'll look over him, that the doctors can, can find what his malady is and he can be eased of his pain. Be with all those that we need to pray for. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father. Help us in all ways to do your will. Because when we do that, you do become the rock of our salvation. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I hope that you will be safe, and may God bless you all.